Oh, and here's the DTCC's roadmap of distributed ledger tech. And when did they start? 2015, 2016. When? The former president joined Ripple as an advisor. That all of the judgment and the hate towards the XRP army and all of the things that they've said over the last few years, I, I think it's going to age very badly because it looks like they're right about a lot of stuff. What's up guys, Kevin Cage here with another XRP update. Let's dive right into this one. We're going to be looking at the XRP price chart. And I also want to kind of give my commentary over BitBoy's commentary and his opinion on XRP. And also just to correct a few things. Um, I don't know everything. I stay in my small circle of competence and I do like that he's covering XRP more. And some things to note. ADA and XRP are actually more highly correlated than even XRP is to Bitcoin, which is quite strange. You would think that Bitcoin, the king of the market, with the largest market cap, the highest volume, would be the one controlling the price. Pretty strange. Next up, massive shout out to Constellation DAG, D-A-G, still making another all-time high as we speak. I am so beyond excited for the future of this asset specifically, and it's not even at a $1 billion market cap. Its price action and fractal literally reminds me of many of the bull runs we saw in the past for XRP. More and more state channels are going live, and this potentially could impact the entire cryptocurrency space in the way that we implement smart contracts today. Big data, guys. I also really just want to parrot essentially exactly what the website says on Constellation. 90% of all data that exists today was created in the last five years. And as you know, data is growing and compounding exponentially, just like we want our returns to do. Consider all these silly TikTok videos or YouTube videos made on a daily basis. That is stored somewhere, that is data. I know the Department of Defense has listed out figures with what, so many quintillion or terabytes, just massive figures of storage. And this is only going to be getting bigger. So there is a massive focus on the world's data, big data, anything in between on how this is secured transacted, and distributed for redundancy purposes. And I love HBAR. I absolutely love HBAR. They're both built, Constellation and HBAR are both built on directed acyclic graphs. And although HBAR is awesome, and yes, I hold it because I have a brain, it's micro pennies per transaction. Constellation's hyper graph transfer protocol is essentially fee-less, fee-less, no fees, and can actually scale infinitely. The bigger the network gets, the faster it can scale. I know we've been talking about this since it was under two pennies on Patreon, and I know I've been screaming about this asset since it was three cents on YouTube for the past several months, for good reason. So keep an eye on Constellation. And speaking of this, with the XRP price chart, we have XRP on the left and DAG on the right, both on the weekly chart. And I've been going across and basically saying, what if DAG, although it is a smaller cap, that in my opinion will reach well over a $1 billion market cap, this breakout reaching those top FIB extensions and the wick actually did hit the 4618 as I've shown, was potentially leading the way for what's to come. And little do we know, it is leading the way. RSI is in a great position and XRP's weekly RSI is getting up there. XRP is that higher cap asset, one of my biggest holdings. And these fractals really do look, hit, reject, and then shoot up for that blow off top. But remember in 2017, you saw other assets, instead of just doing a little blow off the top, they actually go tenfold higher, which is something I am looking for in this market. Because there's many assets creating all-time high prices now, and many people are calling a bear market. Yet assets like DAG, QNT, Solana, Terra Luna, even against their Bitcoin price chart are creating all-time highs against the BTC pair and the US dollar pair. XRP hasn't done it yet, so I continue to hold my XRP and focus on that. I'm not about to sell the bottom and buy the top. Here's another look, XRP price chart on the left-hand side. This is the daily, though, and this is the Ethereum price chart on the weekly time frame. This cup and handle formation, double bottom showing ample support and climbing up. We've gone through the monthlies. I've already bored you with all those details for the past several months, and I'm going to keep repeating it because I really like what I'm seeing. And if you watch my previous video I uploaded just a few hours ago, I highlight the RSI for XRP. Big wicks are natural, volatility is expected in this market, and I wait for my higher price. And before playing the BitBoy clip and giving my commentary on top of it, I want to show this. Cough, cough, XRP. 
The DTCC, the Fed before the Fed, yeah, they sent over two quadrillion dollars in 2019 and are looking at distributed ledger tech. Well, who is the DTCC? Well, they're one of the biggest organizations in the world, the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation. Looking at this back in 2020, just another coincidence, I'm sure. Resharing for newcomers. I know this is old. Don Donahue, former CEO and COO of the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation, was named an advisor in 2015 for the company Ripple. In quotes, Ripple is already a clear leader in this space. Back in 2015, it seems they transacted $1.6 quadrillion on an annual basis. The Federal Reserve before the Fed even existed. But yet, all XRP holders are crazy and we're conspiracy theorists. Then he was also named Chairman of Global Payment Steering Group back in 2016 moving from proof of concept to commercial ready solutions. Then we've gone through 2015, 2016 on this channel, XRP actually being trialed by some huge banks. And there's a variety of projects listed as well, focusing on high value and low value payments. And the former president of the DTCC, chairman of the Global Payment Steering Group, transfer of money across borders using blockchain. These leading banks are working with Ripple, in an effort to drastically reduce the time and cost of settlements, remember, there's still T plus two that exists today, meaning that they clear the money and it takes two days to settle. No, we are moving towards a landscape that is instant. And by instant, I mean less than just a couple minutes, if not even seconds. We even have Ripple CEO and co-founder Chris Larson at the time quoting the work of the Global Payment Steering Group, a new global interbank network will give financial institutions and their customers the ability to make new types of payments at mass scale. They are years ahead. Oh, and here's the DTCC's roadmap of distributed ledger tech. And when did they start? 2015, 2016, when? The former president joined Ripple as an advisor. Do you see the coincidences? This is why I will continue to scream XRP as some of the strongest fundamentals. And we're not even discussing fundamentals. I'm actually just kind of showing you connections that exist. Early exploration in 2016. Contribution to open source, evaluation of use cases in 2017, operationalizing the technology, proving the tech's ability to scale, define governance and future business models, assess regulatory landscape, and then prove the tech's security in existing frameworks 2020. Oh, and we're already SOC 2 compliant. And then we have Project ION, and we all know who said keep your eye on the prize well before this ever came out, and before anybody, even phenomenal researchers like King Solomon ever found this, like doing targeted keyword searches, never finding it, because they didn't want you to yet. Pretty strange. And this is Matthew L-I-N-Y, highlighting Project Ion when this came out back in May 2020. I just want to share this because there's been so many new XRP community members that have come, probably since last November, and they're focused on current price. Do your research. Take it all in and decide for yourselves. I have my own opinions because I've done my own research. So we're going to watch this clip. I'm going to give my commentary over it. And thank you, Digital Asset Investor, for sharing. Here we go. And that's kind of what I see with XRP right now is this is easy money. And, and I think that all of the judgment and the hate towards the XRP army and all the things that they've said over the last few years, I, I think it's going to age very badly because it looks like they're right about a lot of stuff. Now, were they getting crazy conspiracy, uh, you know, theory? Were, were they doing crazy conspiracy theories and reading too much into things? Maybe on some level, but the banks are adopting XRP. The, the, the big narrative before was that. Okay, so first things first, banks are using XRP today. We've done over $2 billion in actual payment flows for financial institutions, not just you and me on the retail side. But for financial institutions helping people send remittance payments, there are corridors that are live through Japan, the Philippines, Australia, even Mexico to the United States. These are pushing billions of dollars per year. And as we know, there's $155 trillion sent globally across borders. And the company Ripple's been saying we've been going after this from the get-go. We've gone over the recent ODL patents that people think are crazy. Then, of course, FlashFX announces shortly after that they are launching ODL corridors. And I know Bitcoin maximalists typically dismiss everything we discuss on this channel as conspiracy. Yes, I know there's some crazy conspiracies out there with digital assets, XRP, Bitcoin, you name it. And I don't want to get into that. But there's definitely, for anybody that has been watching this channel or any crypto channel for the past few years, whether you agree with me or not on everything, I'm certain you agree that there's definitely more to this crypto stuff than meets the eye. And a lot of things that Bitcoin maximalists dismiss is they haven't even done their research. And not financial advice, but I do have to say this. If you truly believe that XRP goes to zero, 
That literally tells me that you did no research besides reading the first article that popped up in Google that was also written by Bitcoin maximalists. And for anybody new to the channel, guys, I like all crypto, I'm for it, but I'm not going to ignore the utility and potential of XRP. I hold dozens of assets. So let's continue. That, oh, the banks were using the Ripple technology, but they weren't going to be using XRP. Now, a lot of people don't know. Okay, so what that typically meant was that people were saying, okay, Ripple and Ripple Net, their network of users, had a few products. There was XVIA for corporates. There was XCurrents, which is really messaging. But then Swift GPI was created by Swift, essentially the same thing. And those do not compete with XRP. And then they had XRapid, which is years ago. And then they rebranded XRapid into on-demand liquidity or ODL. And I'm sure some Bitcoin maximalists still call it XRapid. But anyways, ODL is what is used for settlements. Of course, they're going to push the most liquid, most efficient in terms of energy consumption, cost, and speed, and has the highest throughput that is levels beyond Ethereum and Bitcoin combined. And really quick, I'm going to try to finish this rant quickly. I know somebody's going to comment and go, yeah, but Kevin, haven't you heard of this crypto? It's rank 2000 on coin market cap. It's priced at, let's say, one one thousandth of a penny, and it's priced way cheaper than XRP. There's more opportunity, and it has 50,000 transactions per second. Well, that's cool in theory, but there's other issues than just that in terms of fundamentals. One of which would be a proof of concepts. XRP's already had proof of concepts with tons of central banks actively engaged with 40 to 50 of the top central banks of the world. Well over 65 million ledgers closed successfully without a single error and will shortly have a 10 year anniversary soon. That is something that banks are ready to adopt, not something that just came out last year and banks say, oh, it looks good, it's faster, let's do it. They are so, so conservative with their approach. And please remember, the gentleman I showed this video as well, ACI Worldwide, they sent $14.14 trillion per day, including securities. They literally mentioned the head of real-time payments there, said Ripple and its products will be some of these settlements options alongside Swift in the years ahead. Not me, and not some XRP conspiracy theorist, but the people in charge of some of the largest payment providers and technology providers in the world. And Ripple is on their website. So we're not all conspiracy theorists. There's a method to this madness, and I've done my research. And partnerships matter too. There's some great projects that have come out in the past year or two. Truth be told, Ripple and the XRP Ledger are actually still a bit ahead. When Ripple rebranded a lot of their products and came out with RippleNet, you, you have to use XRP. No, you do not. They want That defeats the whole purpose of shoving some token or coin down somebody's throat. They want an open payment landscape. You're going to choose XRP because it's the most efficient option, they actually allow you to use the option to use a CBDC if it's actually ready on, which we're far away from. So, nope. And they don't want to use Swift. So what other option do they have that actually is a token in existence today with ample liquidity and a fairly decentralized unique node list? XRP. But they don't shove it down anyone's throat. You're just going to pick the best option. So on-demand liquidity is built agnostic, just like Corda of R3. And XRP was the first settlement mechanism named by Corda of R3. Then they shortly did Swift GPI and more products on the way. They don't force you to do anything. That defeats the purpose of crypto and open payments. To use RippleNet, you have to use XRP to use their on-demand liquidity service now. XRP is now woven into that entire, uh, you know, the, the UI that is RippleNet that all the banks are going to be using. And we're seeing slowly, one by one in Asia, more banks committing to Ripple. But I actually kind of get what he's saying here because... It is XRP interwoven in the UI. So I'm not correcting him. I'm correcting the idea that it always has to be XRP, where you've literally heard David Schwartz explain this in video. This has already been determined. The banks are going to use Ripple. When you start understanding that 90% of the banks are owned by basically one entity, uh, you really start understanding that these dominoes are falling, but they've been predetermined to fall. So uh, Ripple is out there doing work right now. They're, they're adding so much to what they're offering. And the banks are starting to adopt it. Meanwhile, in the United States, they've got the SEC lawsuit. It's very clear they're winning that lawsuit. It's very clear at worst. We agree on that. They're getting a slap on the wrist. How do we know that? And also, regarding slap on the wrists, go back into history. I know Jeremy Hogan actually covered this really well. Going through several assets that were sued, crypto assets that were sued by the SEC. And then after the lawsuit, those assets proceeded to pump. Kin pumped 2,000% plus, and of course other companies that we know have also been sued by the SEC who hasn't, such as Tesla and Amazon. And I think we're well aware of the performance of those assets over the past several years. 
that <clears throat> well it, it just we know it from all the news but we also know it because around the world they're continuing business like normal they haven't slowed down at all they know that they're going to win this and when that happens which i'm being told by some insiders on, on the case the middle of september at the latest is going to be when this thing is going to be settled they said things are changing rapidly it could be much earlier than that okay first things first let's hope bitboy is right and also, full disclosure, I will never tell you I have secret information, secret knowledge, or an insider in order to get more views. If I do have secret knowledge, I would not say that on YouTube. I would just continue making videos as is. <laughs> it could change as we get closer to that date, but by the middle of September, the SEC lawsuit should be settled. So in about a month from now. So that's the very, 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 very optimistic way of looking at it. Um, super interesting. I think Extra Peace Price will do what it wants to do. But if it does absolutely rocket and follow suit with some other assets we are seeing going parabolic, I'm going to be expecting some good news regarding the SEC lawsuit as well. So you think about that September 12th date for Cardano, and you think about the middle of September for XRP, we could be looking at the most explosive altcoin season we've ever seen, led by those two coins. Hell yeah. All right. I like what BitBoy said overall.